Hey guys, this is Joe Metalone, and today we're going to take a look at Angular JS filters. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of nice along the way to just show you some cool things that I use that might help you in your workflow. Uh, so right off the bat, I'm here in PowerShell, uh, but I'm actually in something called Console 2, which is a command prompt replacement for Windows. Uh, it gives you tabs and just a bunch of other nice little features. Um, Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is make a directory for our app. I'm going to call that ng, and I'm going to cd into that, and now I'm going to add a new item, and this is a PowerShell command, uh, index.html, and that is going to be a file. Okay, so uh, one cool thing about PowerShell, and obviously therefore in console, is you can create all these little custom commandlets. Uh, one that I've got here is a shortcut for the Sublime Text Editor, and I can pass in a period for the root directory, or if I wanted to just work on the file, I could pass in the file name. Uh, I'm going to bring up the directory, and sh 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 don't need that, don't need that. Okay, so here we are in the Sublime Text Editor, uh, and let's bring up our HTML file, and right off the bat, a little Zen coding, uh, HTML colon 5, tab, we've got an HTML document, we can go ahead and save that. Now, uh, of course, what we need is Bower, or not Bower, we need Angular, uh, but I'm going to use Bower to get that. So one cool thing about S the Sublime Text Editor is it has its own package manager. Um, you can bring up this kind of uh, all-encompassing menu with Control-Shift-P, and then you can search for whatever you need to do. And what I'm going to bring up is Bower, which is a package manager that I have installed in the Sublime Package Manager. Uh, so wrap your mind around that. It's package manager within a package manager. Uh, so I'm going to hit enter on that. And now I can search the Bower repository from here. So Angular, and there it is. I can click on that. And down here, I don't know if you can see it, it says downloading Angular. And up here, it just dropped it into this components folder. Here we go. We've got Angular. Um, again, Control Shift P. And I can do copy from this JavaScript file. And I can say copy as tag script. I can jump back to my HTML and paste that right in. I am going to drop this leading forward slash uh, because we're going to be running this uh, off the hard drive, not off of a server. I'm going to save that. And then I'm also going to go ahead and get bootstrap just to make this look a little better. Bootstrap. And all I need there is a CSS. There's a uh, repository for that. So now it's downloading bootstrap CSS. That'll show up in our components folder. Here's the CSS. I can go ahead and click on that and copy it just like I did with the JavaScript, except I'm going to copy as tag style. And I can drop that in right here. And again, I'm going to get rid of that forward slash at the beginning. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building our app so I can show you these filters. Uh, so script and Angular module. We're going to start off with our app, which we're just going to call app. And it has no dependencies. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a controller. And we're going to call that the controller. That'll work. And into that, I'm going to inject <coughs> scope. And I'm going to inject HTTP. And here's our function to kick all that off, which is going to take in the scope and the HTTP. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how we use that HTTP, because what I'm going to do is go and get some JSON data. Um, basically, the way that works, if, if you've used uh, jQuery, it's a lot like $.ajax. Uh, what it does is it takes in a URL right here, and then when it retrieves that data, uh, you call this success. And that's a function that accepts the data. Now, at the end of this URL, we're going to have to have... Uh, something we're gonna have to call, have a callback there and uh, there's a built-in one called JSON underscore callback that basically Angular is in real time gonna replace with the name of a function that will call this success function okay so um, what we need to do is get some data uh, I'm gonna use filtext.com for that so I just load up a browser filtext.com and uh, let's see, this one's just first name and last name. That'll do. So I'm just going to plug that in right here. And let's see, that's 10 rows. Let's make it, I don't know, 30 rows. I want to do an ID. So ID equals index. 
first name, last name, and then let's just do uh, city equals city. I don't need this pretty equals true, but what I do need is that callback. So callback equals uh, JSON call oops, call back. Ah, and you know what? I do have one issue here. So we're actually calling the JSON P method of the HTTP uh, module. There's, you know, a git and a post, I believe, a few others, but the JSONP is specifically for getting JSON data back. Uh, okay, so all this looks pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is, once we get that data back, we're gonna uh, add it to the scope, and we're gonna say scope users equals the data. So now our controller has this users uh, variable in its scope, in the scope of the controller. So up here, we're gonna wire up our HTML, ng app equals oh, app. And then here in our body, we're gonna start off our controller. Uh, so let's do div, and then we're gonna say ng controller equals, and we called it the controller. Whoa, controller. Okay, and then uh, this is tabular data, so let's throw it into a table. Um, T head, TD times, what do we got here? One, two, three, four pieces of data times four. So ID, first, last, and city. And here on our table body, we're going to do that again times four. And uh, so to access that data, um, we're going to end up throwing this in what's called a repeater. So let me just get this table row here around that. And in the repeater, we identify what we want to call each item. So in JavaScript, if you did like a for each item in data, it's kind of like that. So ng repeat equals, and then um, I'm just going to say users or user in users this could be item and users whatever the important part is users which is in the scope of our controller uh, so now the way that we get to that is this double curly brackets so user dot uh, first name I think was what it was let me just copy that in here user dot l name user dot city and then you know what the other one was user dot id I'm going to put that in the first column just because I want to. All right. Uh, so I think we're looking pretty good. Let's load this up. I'm sure I messed something up. Nope, nope. We're looking pretty good. Uh, so we've got all this random data. we got IDs, first name, last name, and a city. Uh, I am going to just throw in a little bootstrap to clean this up. Whoa. Container. And then on the table, class equals table, table striped, and table ordered. Okay, let's refresh that. Okay, it's looking a little better here. Uh, we're good to go. So, let's see. I really need to buy this. All right, <clears throat> so filters. Um, easiest filter right off the bat is order by. So let's say we want to order by first name. Save that, refresh this, and you can see when we're getting the data, it's in no particular order. Neil, Cheryl, Lorena, whatever. If I refresh this, now we got all our A's, B's, D's, and so forth. So it's automatically sorted by that field. Uh, if we wanted to sort that the other way around, oops, if we want to sort that the other way around, we just add a negative to the beginning of that. And now we're going to Y, X, all the way up to A. Uh, you can do that by any field you want. Um, you can also do it by multiple fields. So if you want to do multiple fields, you do uh, an array of those fields. So this is probably going to be a little hard to identify exactly how it's sorting it, but basically it's sorting it by first name and then last name. Uh, don't ask me what we're looking at, but technically that's what it's doing. Okay, so uh, another really cool one is the filter. Um, you can filter by just about anything, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an input field here, and I'm going to give it an Angular model of search. 
Now down here, rather than order by, I can say filter is search. And now what's cool is I've got this text field here, <clears throat> and what's going to end up happening, let's see, we've got somebody here named, uh, let's try to find something normal, Sally. Okay, so S-A-L. Boom, there's our Sally. And it's searching by all the fields. So if I said uh, on the Inglewood there, if I said wood, I get that too. W-O. Let me refresh this, see if we can get some. Okay, so we got a Dave in there. Dave. We've only got one Dave. D. Okay, so every piece of data here, or one of these three pieces of data, has a D in it every time. Uh, M-A-R. So there you go. We've got a Mary and a Markella. And uh, if I wanted to search by Clayton, C-L-A-Y, Clayton, we've got that as well. Now, if we only wanted to search by one field, uh, we change that here. So search F name. And what we do is refresh that. And now uh, we've got an Erickson, I guess that's the first name. Uh, and Javier also has the E-R in there. And if I start changing that, uh, now I've just got the Erickson. But if I wanted to search by Hellman, that's not going to work. So Hell doesn't work. Um, so that's a quick look on how to filter and order by the, the overall data. Another cool thing is you can apply filters to the individual pieces of data. So you can see here uh, we've got all these first names and last names that are all properly capitalized. Uh, but if I want to go ahead and say let's make the first names all uppercase. If I refresh that, all the first names are uppercase. And uh, also you can do lower case, refresh that, all the last names are completely lowercase, and then one we can use, uh, I can use it on the ID I guess, is I can say currency, and so that's going to turn all my IDs into dollars. Uh, so there's a quick look at uh, some stuff you can do with your workflow, but also uh, uh, a really quick peek at Angular filters. Um, I think we'll circle back and show you how to do some custom filters when you want to uh, do some filtering that you know maybe isn't built into Angular.